Imagine an entire island turning red, not with sunsets or autumn leaves, but with millions of crabs marching relentlessly toward the ocean. During the annual crab migration, all of Christmas Island is seeing red. On Christmas Island, this annual migration is one of nature's most breathtaking spectacles. A sea of red moving in perfect unison. But paradise is under siege. For decades, a tiny invader has been decimating these crabs, turning the island into a battlefield. The solution? Scientists released millions of ant killers, tiny warriors almost invisible to the naked eye. What happened next stunned the world, proving that sometimes the smallest creatures can decide the fate of an entire island. Paradise under siege. Christmas Island sits alone in the Indian Ocean, 217 miles south of Java and 1,600 miles northwest of Perth, Australia. The island is actually an underwater mountain with only 1,180 feet rising above the sea. Over millions of years, unique creatures evolved here that exist nowhere else on Earth. At the heart of this ecosystem lives the red crab. These bright crimson crustaceans rule the forest floor. They dig burrows, eat fallen leaves, turn the soil, and keep the whole place running smoothly. For most of the year, these crabs live solitary lives in their underground homes. But when the wet season arrives between October and November, something magical happens. They emerge all at once. Males head to the coast first, digging mating burrows in the sand. Females follow days later, choosing the best males with the strongest burrows. After mating, each female carries up to 100,000 eggs. During the last quarter moon, the females rush to the water's edge before dawn, the females rush to the ocean's edge. They release their eggs into the ocean in a synchronized dance. The eggs hatch instantly upon touching seawater. Some crabs can lay 100,000 eggs at a time. The larvae spend about four weeks in the ocean before returning as tiny crabs, beginning their journey inland to the forest. Sir David Attenborough called this migration one of the most memorable moments from his entire career. The ground literally turns red, roads close, residents use leaf blowers and rakes to help the crabs cross safely. This spectacle drew tourists from around the world. But then everything changed. In the first half of the 20th century, yellow crazy ants arrived. Nobody knows exactly when or how, but they probably hitched a ride on supply ships. These ants came from Southeast Asia, though their true origin remains mysterious. On their home turf, natural predators keep them in check. However, on Christmas Island, nothing stopped them. The ants spread like wildfire. They formed super colonies covering hundreds of acres, housing billions of ants working as one massive organism. Underground ant cities stretched across the landscape. One colony alone covered 1,850 acres. Scientists could only estimate numbers by counting ants on the surface. One study found over 1,000 ants per square meter. When these super colonies met the red crabs, a massacre began. Yet with so many attacking at one time, even a fully armored crab doesn't stand a chance. Since the late 1990s, the ant invaders have killed tens of millions of crabs. The question everyone asked was simple. Could anything stop them? The acid army yellow crazy ants earned their name from their erratic movements. Watch them for a minute and you'll see them dart around randomly, appearing frenzied and don't let their size fool you. These tiny ants pack serious weapons. When threatened, they spray formic acid. This ranks among nature's most powerful acids. They aim for the eyes and leg joints of larger creatures, blinding them and rendering them immobile. Then the swarm moves in. A red crab wandering into ant territory faces certain death. With up to a thousand ants per square meter near super colonies, escape becomes impossible. The acid attacks the crab's eyes first. With their vision gone, the crab loses their sense of direction. The acid eats into leg joints, paralyzing movement. Then, the ants swarm, tearing their victim apart piece by piece. The acid doesn't just kill individuals, 
It works as a toxic gas, suffocating everything nearby. A crab's burrow, once captured, becomes a nursery for ant lar larvae. Any crabs living nearby typically die within 24 hours from the lingering fumes. The death toll staggered scientists. Conservative estimates suggested 10 to 15 million red crabs had died from ant attacks. That's nearly a third of the island's entire crab population. The famous migration routes turned into death zones. Tourists expecting to see hundreds of crabs instead found torn bodies scattered across the forest floor. Rangers tried fighting back with poison bait. Starting in 2001, they used anto, which contains fipronil mixed into protein granules that ants find irresistible. This neurotoxin attacks the nervous systems of invertebrates. Park workers laid bait by hand, walking between massive super colonies, swarming with billions of ants. Helicopters dropped bait from the air three times to cover more ground. The approach worked temporarily. Ant numbers would drop in treated areas, but within a few years, they returned from the untreated parts of the island. New colonies sprang up. The cycle repeated endlessly. It cost money, required constant effort, and only provided short-term relief. Scientists needed a permanent solution. The scale of the problem was overwhelming. Park rangers and ecologists walked through areas once teeming with crabs, only to find death and silence. The forest floor, once alive with the bright flashes of crimson, became a gray wasteland of leaves and lifeless bodies. Entire sections of rainforest were suffocating under the weight of unprocessed leaf litter. Without the crabs, seedlings grew unchecked, creating impenetrable thicket. Native birds struggled to find food, and small reptiles disappeared under the acid-spraying ant hordes. The ecological clock was ticking, and with every passing year, the chance to save this unique ecosystem diminished. The human toll was also felt. Local communities relied on tourism driven by the migration spectacle, and the loss of crabs threatened both income and cultural pride. Scientists knew that conventional measures such as poison bait and manual removal were only temporary. They needed a long-term, sustainable approach. The stakes couldn't have been higher. The future of Christmas Island's rainforest, its red crabs, and the delicate balance of an entire ecosystem hung in the balance. The key to defeating the ants lay in understanding their food source. These super colonies couldn't survive without a constant supply of nutrients, and that nutrition came from an unexpected place. Another invasive species provided the ants with their primary fuel source. A tiny insect most people never noticed was secretly powering the entire ant invasion. Cut off that food supply and maybe, just maybe, the ants would collapse on their own. But finding that solution would require looking halfway around the world. The Invisible Partnership Yellow Laxcale Insects These tiny bugs don't look like much. They latch onto trees, sucking sap, and secret treading a sweet liquid called honeydew. That honeydew is pure carbohydrate fuel. For yellow crazy ants, it's everything. The relationship between ants and scale insects resembles farming. The ants protect their scale insects like livestock driving away predators. In return, the scale insects produce endless supplies of honeydew. This symbiotic partnership helped both invasive species spread across Christmas Island at a frightening speed. Studies confirmed the connection. When researchers cut ants off from scale insects, ant activity on the ground dropped by 95% within just four weeks. Without their sugar supply, the ants couldn't maintain their massive colonies they couldn't reproduce at the same rates, and their super colonies started to weaken. But the scale insects caused problems of their own. High populations stress trees severely. The insects drain sap like vampires, weakening even large trees until leaves start falling. On Christmas Island, season after season of this stress killed trees outright. The honeydew dripping onto branches encouraged mold growth mold-covered leaves, blocking photosynthesis, and resulting in more dead trees. 
scientists realized something crucial. You couldn't just poison the ants forever. The scale insects would always be there ready to feed the next ant invasion. You had to break the cycle at its source, control the scale insects, and you control the ants. This principle forms the foundation of biological control. Every species in nature has natural enemies, predators, parasites, and diseases that keep populations in check. When organisms become invasive in new territories, they leave those natural enemies behind. That's why they explode in numbers. The solution? Find the natural enemy and bring it to the invasion site. Restore the balance that nature intended researchers started searching for enemies of yellow locale insects in Southeast Asia. Something had to keep them controlled in their homeland while they ran rampant on Christmas Island. The search led to Malaysia. There, scientists found their answer. A tiny wasp species that specifically targeted yellow locale insects. This wasp kept scale populations so low in Southeast Asia that the insects barely appeared in surveys. The wasps were that effective. Could this same wasp work on Christmas Island? Would it be safe to introduce another species? History showed plenty of biological control disasters. The research had to be thorough because if they released millions of ant killers, the consequences of getting it wrong could devastate the entire island. Enter the assassin. Scientists from LRO University in Melbourne led the search. After years of field research starting in 2009, they identified their target to Charty Summer, a parasitic wasp from Malaysia measuring just two millimeters long, barely visible to the naked eye. This wasp is a specialist killer. It lays eggs inside adult female scale insects. The eggs hatch and the larvae feed on their host from the inside out, killing it. When the new wasps emerge, they immediately search for more scale insects to parasitize. The cycle repeats endlessly. A single wasp can lay up to eight eggs in one female scale insect. Over its lifetime, one wasp can parasitize more than 150 scale insects. In Southeast Asia, this wasp works alongside other predators to keep yellow last scale populations controlled in their native range. The wasp doesn't sting humans. It doesn't build nests. It doesn't harm native wildlife, plants, or crops. Many similar micro wasps already lived on Christmas Island, going completely unnoticed by residents. This particular species had one focus, yellow lack scale insects. Scientists needed to verify this specificity. They conducted field tests in Malaysia, exposing eight closely related scale insect species to the wasp, none were harmed. The wasp ignored them completely. This proved that no other scale insect population on Christmas Island faced risk. Researchers also tested whether the wasp would hunt scale insects even when yellow crazy ants acted as their bodyguards. The answer, absolutely. The wasps attacked regardless of ant presence. The Australian Government Department of Agriculture conducted extensive risk analysis, years of documentation, public comment periods, environmental assessments under the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act. Scientists called this the most thoroughly researched biological control project in Australian history. After years of testing, Australia approved the WASP for release in 2015. In 2016, scientists transported 167 WASPs from Malaysia to Christmas Island and began breeding millions of them. By 2017, the first 8,000 wasps were released across major ant habitats. Scientists monitored ant numbers, scale insect density, and ecological changes for months and years afterward. Slowly, something incredible happened. Scale insect populations collapsed. Without honeydew, ant colonies shrank. Some sites went from 700 ants to just 10, a massive victory red crabs returned to old territories. By 2024, the red crab population jumped from 40 to 50 million to over 100 million. The migration became more spectacular than it had been in decades roads closed as millions of crabs crossed safely. 
tourism boomed again. Scientists, rangers, and locals celebrated one of the world's greatest conservation wins. Christmas Island is now a global example of successful biological control. Millions of crabs stand as proof. Would you support releasing wasps where you live if it meant saving an ecosystem? Share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this incredible story of red crabs and the Christmas Island.